you welcome back. This is up front. Now, specifically, this is a quote from the statement issue today. It says, you can do all the propaganda about the cosmetic fiscal deficit numbers, but the public debt will show your smoothness level. This is the claim for the minority in Ghana's parliament, taking the government to tax over its recent boring spree. Tonight, we are going to interrogate and look clean at the very debt figures being quoted and the debt implications of what's happening currently. Are they blowing out of proportion the current situation, or we are indeed risking serious debt sustainability problems, which we have been before, which we've actually had difficulties with in times past. So that's the crux of our engagement. The Honourable Kisela to force is a member of Parliament, so also the ranking member on the Finance Committee of Parliament. Honourable, you're welcome to our front. Thank you, Raymond. This is not the first time the Ghanaian economy has had to deal with debts out to 58% of its GDP. What's the big deal? Raymond, um, the situation today is very different. Different in the sense that this is a government that has had so much in oil revenue so much in tax revenue that has benefited from two oil fields. Again, they have benefited when you talk about the rebasing of the GDP by 25%. So if they are to say that 58% is something that we've seen in the past and so it is normal, unfortunately that is not the case. Clearly this is a government that promised all of us that they will not borrow. And apart from that, they've said to all of us that indeed, um, our debt they can repay, the finance minister said. But in fact, the indices does not point to the fact that they can repay. As we speak today, total revenue is not enough to service debt and to pay wages. In fact, you will need 13% more of total revenue, tax revenue, to be able to service our debt and to repay and to pay for wages and salaries. That situation is not acceptable and it's something that we have to let the government be aware and to caution this, that where they are going, there's the need for them to put some brakes. And that is why we came out today to signal to Ghanaians that where this government is taking us to, if care is not taken, they will end up destroying the very fiscal space that we've had, that we intended to use it to benefit the people of Ghana in a productive investment. Unfortunately, it's going to consumption. Now, let's put this in perspective, because you also made reference to the multi policy, policy report. Uh, report from the Bank of yeah. Ghana. I took particular interest in the debt report in mm. there. Mm. It says that in line with the above developments, mm. the stock of public debt rose from 57.5% of GDP, mm -hmm. which is 190 at the end of March 2019, mm -hmm. compared with 49.5% of GDP mm -hmm. at the end of March 2018. Mm -hmm. And there's an instructive point to make here. Okay. Of the total debt stock, 11 billion, that's somewhere around 3.2% of the GDP, mm -hmm. rep represented bonds issued to support the financial sector cleanup. Mm -hmm. Something they think was predominantly occasioned by people who work under the government you work for? Hey, obviously that is not the case. And um, let me also say that um, government approach is what has actually cost the nation 11 billion. There are other approaches that they could have adopted. The sector needed about half of this money to be able in a form of um, stimulus package to be able to revive the sector. They decided to go to, through the approach that we are saying today. And that approach is costing us. Mm -hmm. That approach has costed the state almost 12 billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. So who should we blame? It is the cost to the state. And let me also say that the 49% of GDP that they are making reference to, yeah. you see, if you are not careful, see, that statement is misleading. Misleading in the sense that they are using a projected GDP for December of the period. Yeah. And then they are using the actual debt stock for the period. Yeah. So you cannot compare it to end year GDP, um, um, debt to GDP numbers. In fact, you can compare it to previous year, the same period, and mm -hmm. then you can draw conclusion as to whether we are doing well or not. I'm unclear my see, mind on that. Um, uh, you, the, you understand what they're saying that. Yes. is that the public debt rose from 57.5%, which is the yes. current one, yes. as of March and then. Yes. And this is compared to the 49.5% mm -hmm. last year, yes. within the same period. Within the same about. period, okay. So, yes. so you could see from 49 to 57%. So yes. you, you, you can see the jump. Mm -hmm. Almost 8%. Yeah. Big jump. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I think it's something that all of us should be concerned. Within a year period, we've added 8% of a GDP, a GDP that has been rebased, a GDP that has benefited from a, two additional oil fields. So the GDP, so the denominator has become bigger. Yeah. A bigger denominator, yet 
the what do you call it the nominal debt increase is so much that it accounts for eight percent that but is huge you're not disputing whether or not you are going to get the amount of gdp we say we will be getting uh gdp projection for 2018 was uh three four four million in that particular case right? yes 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 so you're not um i, I think it's, it's it's a different matter that we, we want to get in today mm -hmm. we want to look at the debt numbers yeah. And then we can draw down to the GDP issues when mm -hmm. we issue our next statement, maybe next week. Okay, well, that's, it, that's, the, it, the, that's the interesting. Issues. So no, but yes. the crux of this confirmation that mm -hmm. you're making to us is that government is borrowing too much. Too much. Too government much. says the rate of borrowing is actually reduced. No, nope, it hasn't. It hasn't. You Compared see, to which period? this government is tickling itself and smiling to all of us and creating an uh, impression that obviously they are doing so well. They are not. They are not. You see? If you were to look at the fiscal numbers, and, um, 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 and I don't know if you've read what Honorable Setepe wrote to today, mm -hmm. uh, postponing the fiscal pain, yeah. part one, and I think he, the part two is going to come out tomorrow. Um, this government is doing cosmetic accounting. What does cosmetic that mean? Cosmetic accounting in the sense that you say that you are, you are actually recording a primary surplus. Okay? It means that if you are to take the total expenditure minus interest, and then you compare it to revenue, the government is recording some form of surpluses, okay? So it means that they are not actually borrowing to pay for interest. But the numbers does not prove that. You see, this expenditure, because you measure fiscal deficit from financing, and as long as the fiscal deficit includes, or, or the financing includes the financial sector bailout, you cannot exclude it from them. Okay. It is part of the primary balance. And so they've deliberately removed that from the fiscal sub, uh, deficit or, and again removed it from the primary balance. So the primary balance that you are seeing that it is surplus is indeed giving you a deficit if you are to add it back. And that is why, in spite of the fact that they are saying that the government is recording a primary surplus, the debt is actually growing. And we need more than our revenue to do it. Raymond, let me give you something of interest. And it will surprise you that in the year 2017, we needed tax revenue, okay? The mm -hmm. entire tax revenue okay. is not enough to pay for interest payment and wages and salaries. Okay. In fact, it's, you need 108% of total tax revenue to be able to pay for all of that. So you need 8% more. For the year 2018, this amount moved down to 101%. But what surprises me is that the first quarter data, you can check from the Ministry of Finance website. Mm -hmm. If you are to look at the entire tax revenue, okay, and compare it to wages and salaries and interest payment, you needed 113% one, of that to be able to take care of this. Simple put, first quarter, you need additional tax revenue to be able to pay for wages and salaries and interest, 13% more. That is another that reason is, why that we is serious. to ask for people to give us some money to bridge the gap. But you see, but you see, um, but let, let, let us the, look the at the quality. Ought to be paid. No, no, but it's, it's because the government is borrowing too much. Sorry, but the wages ought to be paid. The wages ought to be, but the problem is not coming from the wages. The problem is coming from the amount of debt they are accumulating over the period. Debt, amount of, of debt. Uh, debt because, because if you accumulate debt, you pay interest. But, but government has been saying that they are, they are taking these monies to pay the debt you no. and other governments left. No. They no. say that they, no. they, 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 they actually make the point that mm. if you use the old GDP series, you left office with 70, 70.2% okay. of debt to GDP. Okay, and now it's what? A huge one. And now it's what? Now it's, about, it's close to 78%. It, 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 of course. Of I the mean, old series. 78%. Yes. That is serious. You using claim, the old one. Yeah, you're using the old one. Okay. It's about 78 percent where where we are today, Raymond. We don't use debt to GDP to assess as to whether the country can pay for a debt or not. No, that is an antiquated way of doing the mathematics and to draw conclusion that a country is that sustainable or not mm -hmm. in terms of the debt sustainability. Oh, we what we do, what we do, measure. you look at present value of today's debt and compare it to debt servicing. Ghana is breaching the world, 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 worldwide benchmarks. Which is specific? The worldwide be benchmarks are about 40%, and we are around 70 something percent. We passed yes, 40% a long time away. ago. No, no, but, if, if but we, it we, 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 it we're just... within range. We're within range. Really? I said, those are what we call the liquid um, assessment as to whether you can pay your debt. 
I'll give you another example. Another example. Mm -hmm. Another example is um, if you look at today's debt profile, Ghana's debt profile, 51% of public debt are foreign based, foreign denominated uh, um, currency. Yes. Okay. About 49% is CD denominated. Of the 49% that are CD denominated, the foreigners that participate in the CD denominated or CD bonds mm -hmm. is about 50%. So, in essence, what this means is that 76% of our public debt is owned by foreigners. Whether CD or foreign currency, they will need to repatriate your, their coupons, That's their true. interest. Okay. They will need to repatriate even the, the amortization. Mm -hmm. if they don't want to re re reinvest in the system. And that is why I'm not surprised the governor of the central bank said that it's about time the government looks at other ways of financing the budget because where it's going is dangerous. What this means is that at any point in time, the government of Ghana will need foreign currency to be able to pay. Yeah. So in their sustainability analysis, you look at forex that the country earns over the period and then look at it in terms of debt servicing. So that all things being equal, you can get so much money to be able to, to so much forex to be able to service your debt. No wonder our reserves position are being depleted overnight. In fact, in the last monetary policy report, we've seen almost 700 million uh, uh, US dollars uh, depletion within a, a, a period of about two to three, three, three months. But the government is serious with that particular position. Oh, the one that he just recently announced, he himself announced yes. it. The, for example, let yes. me specifically quote okay. to you what the governor actually okay. says about that particular position. Well, the governor is of the opinion that we have actually improved when it comes to gross international reserves. Mm -hmm. And that, that to them is a very important thing. Why, why, why is he using gross? Why is he not talking? about net reserves position but oh, I mean, you, 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 you don't <laughs> use you, you don't use gross for this kind By of analysis the is it, in the gross is it, 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 is it I, I i i hardly and i'm telling you a few analysts will use um, gross international reserves to make decisions nobody do that you don't do that you use net mm -hmm. even the net what they have done today is that today's net position include the petroleum holding funds yeah in the previous administration we never included the phf is there anything wrong with it? Yes, because they are, also, they, they are also encumbered funds. They are also encumbered funds and that it should be taken out of the net. You can add it to the gross, but you have to take it out of the net position so that we will be able to know the actual net reserves position for, for the country. So that you'll be able to draw on as Again, and when you need this it. does not offend any law, right? It's um, just it's, it, I think it's, 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 it's best practice. Best practice. So mm. best practices are out there, and um, everybody wants to toe in line with best practices. And investors look out best practices across the country. So in fact, Raymond, the situation out there, as long as our debt is concerned, is really bleak. How come the Bank bleak. of Ghana disagrees with you? Well, um, I, I'm not aware that Bank of Ghana has said that they disagree with us um, on, uh, on, 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 uh, on an increase in debt of 80 billion Ghana cities within a, a 27 months in, in President Akufo. I mean, they are government. basically saying that the debt is in check. That's what they are saying with their report. <laughs> uh, you think so? Yeah. You think so? In fact, they say that total expenditure was 16.5 billion, slightly mm -hmm. below the targeted 17.3 billion, representing some 37.7% annual mm. growth. Mm. I mean, this link to debt relations, and they made all the wonderful things about the economy doing well mm. in the same MPC report. Raymond, Raymond, I think... Um, um, you see, I read the Bank of Ghana MPC report. Yeah. And, uh, you dispute it. Um, um, unlike the previous MPC report that we've seen, this one looks a bit like redacted. Um, um, it's like a, a, bit, a bit of sensitive part of the document has been taken out. Why? There are six well, pages of it. Which well, part do you think is taken well, out? Well, um, um, I can't pinpoint to you what has been taken out, but clearly, clearly, you see, they are very economical with some of the information that they are putting out there. Specific information is left because, out. Because um, um, recently, yes. I'll give you an example. The IMF, before the exit, mm -hmm. conducted a joint what you call the debt sustainability analysis. The IMF and the World Bank conducted that. And you can see it from the IMF website. Okay. The situation, as long as our debt is concerned, they classified Ghana's debt as a country with high debt. In fact, they said high debt distressed country. Mm -hmm. They said that we have breached all the four major, major thresholds as long as debt sustainability analysis are concerned. And the Bank of Ghana is saying hot. And they are saying it's good, and so they should continue uh, borrowing. I had the governor not long ago when he made a statement. 
that indeed it's about time that this administration or this government looks at other ways of financing. Because in fact, as we speak, we are at the mercy of foreign investors. If you are not that's careful, what we are trying to yeah, do. Yeah, we are trying to find alternatives to the foreign the, the, investors. No, they are rather increasing the foreign denominated bonds. Sorry. They are the, rather increasing. The, the reason why we are Yes. One. Mm -hmm. The finance minister, mm -hmm. and also, in fact, the finance minister said it in parliament. Mm. The vice president retreated to the same point. Mm -hmm. And even the Bank of Ghana said we should look elsewhere. So why are you saying that we are... Is it, is, um, they said we should look elsewhere. Where, yes. where, where are they looking so far? Where They're have they looked at? Domestic Where have they looked at? Investors. The numbers does not show that domestic investors... And I, I've given you the numbers. Yeah. Out of the 49% of the city-denominated bonds that we have, 50% mm, of that amount are those coming from outside Ghana. In fact, they are foreigners. Foreigners. Okay, of course, I mean, it, it, may, it may take some time before so you get them. So I have not seen any improvement. Yeah, okay. I have not seen any improvement. Nothing has been done. Nothing has been done. Raymond, let us not forget that this is a government that has benefited so much in oil revenue. And let me give you some numbers. Let me give you some numbers. Raymond, in the year 2017, the year 2017, this administration had 2.2 billion Ghana cities in oil revenue. Yeah. In the year 2000, and that is, that is coming from tax, taxes alone, mm -hmm. taxes. Mm -hmm. In fact, the same 2000 and um, um, what do you call it, 2018, they benefited approximately 2.9 billion and counting the year 2018. If you were to put everything together for a period of two and a half years, total oil revenue it's amounting to 12.3 billion Ghana cities. 12.3 billion Ghana cities for almost two and a half years in oil revenue. In spite of that, you have decided to add to the public debt approximately 16 billion US dollars. 16 billion US dollars. In fact, I've been very charitable with I, you. I want to quote for you what the response of the finance minister is. And this is instructive. Okay. When asked the question by my colleague, the finance minister says, our needs are extensive. Mm hmm that is, we have a lot of things that we need the money for. Correct. He proceeded to say that any project requires both equity and debt, mm -hmm. which are to be efficiently combined to good effect to ensure you generate the revenue to support what you have borrowed. Mm -hmm. And he concludes by saying, borrowing is not bad mm -hmm. if you have the resources to be able to pay it back and the balance that you need to achieve. As to where the resources will come from, you scan the international market, including your own domestic scene, and figure out how you are going to do that. This is the finance minister's response to your Raymond. You. Raymond, um, let me say that as we speak, and I've given the numbers, total revenue, tax revenue, is not enough to even pay your wages and to pay your debt. So clearly we are not in a position to pay for this debt. Do you have the resources to make up for the difference? Where are the resources? Including your oil revenue, you cannot even pay for this. So he's just borrowing because he wants to borrow, Yet he has nothing to show for it. You are not even but borrowing. Fair, yes, we, we, show we, us. we are not paying. It's not as if we are paying next week or next no, month. But, but you even have to service the debt. I'm even. I'm yes. not talking about the amortization. I'm yes. even talking about interest. Interest. They can pay for the interest. Last year was over fifty percent. We the cannot even pay for the interest revenue. now. The interest is about seventy percent of total tax revenue. As of which month? Oh, as of last month, you heard the finance minister himself. Yes. He himself mm. has confessed to that. Mm. He said it no longer ago. I think a month or so. He said it, that he took about 70%, and you can do the math from the Ministry of Finance website. The data is there. About 70%. So where it is going, in fact, if we don't put it in check, Ghana will default very soon. If we don't default, we'll end up borrowing to service our debt. That is what we are doing. The entire time of the NDC, between the years of 2013, 2016, yes, effectively 2012, 2016, in this particular case, we borrowed, right? Yeah, you know, we, we, went to the we went to the international market. Yes, we did. How many times did we is issue it, these bonds? Is it, is it, it depends on what you borrow for. No, but it's important. I okay. get to no, no, do no, the comparison. No, I can, we, we went to the international market. Yes. How many times? Three times. Three times. Okay. Yes. Three? No, three? Four, four times under the and and this four times. Okay. Okay. How many so times, times this government gone okay. to the They've gone market. twice, but in fact, what they've gone they've gone there twice yes. so far. Yes. And the amount of money they've borrowed is more than what we've done over a four. Okay. Four so year it's year. not a number of times. It's not a number of times. In fact, one tranche they, they did three billion. 
Yeah. One tranche, three billion. Yeah, which is more than what we did for four, four years. people believe now that they did before. Oh, no, no, it's not like that. But that's been explained to you please, before. Please, please, That's the please. argument that... You see, you see, it depends on the coupon you're paying and, 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 and many other factors. Of course, and the rates and, 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 and the environment, the rates, yeah. and so many things. So mm -hmm. that cannot be the situation. That cannot be the way to assess a government. Again, they are that's saying the that largely the conditions under which they got money from the international market were way better than when they ended up. No, it's not true. It's not true. And I think I've had opportunities to explain this. Um, when, when you have a country like Ivory Coast, even Benin, doing better than you, and you claim that you are, you, 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 you. Ivory Coast is improving now. No, but Ivory Coast, um, Ivory Coast did better than us. Benin did better than us. Gambia, uh, another country, Gabon, also did better than us. Um, there's an oil can compare a country, I think, um, I think it's Gabon. They did better than us. So three, all these three um, countries did better than us. Have they always offended. done better than us? Oh, not really. No, really. In fact, we had even we we actually have a better medium term prospect mm -hmm. than them in terms of oil production. I see. Yet they did better than us. So it speaks volume. I disagree that um, investors have serious confidence in, in, in this in, government in, in, compared no, no, to the previous. I, I disagree because they have a better GDP than you. Oh, nominal GDP. Uh, and yes. As a result of rebase, <laughs> you do rebase, and then uh, you have no, no, and no, so no. that we should clap uh, for you. See, see, we started. The, the, the growth rate is better than. Oh, okay. You see, um, the growth rate is better than the oil growth time. rate. Okay. Yes, but what's oil the point? No, no, yeah, but let, let part me of the economy, right? Okay, it's part of the economy. Yeah. Yes. At the time, don't forget to, um, um, that in the year two, uh, 2016, mm -hmm. the oil sector recorded a negative growth. Yeah. As a result, it actually took part of the non-oil sector and, and then brought the normal GDP. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to compare, to actually compare. To under the rebate. So, so if you want to compare, let's compare oranges with oranges. Let's compare what you call the, um, um, the non-oil GDP. NDC did 5% and they did 4.8 in the year 2017. Okay, they did 5% and they, we did 5% they did 4.8. No, the rebase one puts you at the same figure. Okay, well, okay, yeah. okay, you know, even though, if, okay, let's let, let, let assume it's the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it's the same. So there's not been any change okay. in the economy. So, so what, what, what has changed? The real sector has not seen any major change. Okay. So that's the see, basis for if, this. Even, even if it is the same, okay, mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry to say that that is not good enough. In the sense that they recorded a windfall of revenue coming from the oil sector. Because yeah. the oil sector grew by almost 37%. Yeah. So that 37% and total oil revenue, the oil revenue increased by almost twice. If they had used that money prudently, the non-oil sector should have done better than what we saw pre previously. So it is not an excuse. It's not an excuse for them to do 5% as compared to previous administration, 5%. And that's why I've always said that this administration, they do not have any qualms to complain about. They have nothing to complain. They have to do better than what we did. Now, there's a massive improvement in the net international reserve. I'm, I'm looking at this from the summary of economic and financial data okay. being put out there. Okay. By January of this year, yeah. it was 3.5 billion. Mm -hmm. We're looking at by April, mm -hmm. it was 5.9 billion. Yeah. As what, it's being put out what, here. What happened? Debt. Euro bond. <laughs> Go and borrow and put it there. <laughs> so you go and borrow and put it there. He said we should clap for you. Excellent. We will clap for you. Oh no! But, no. <laughs> what you're saying that's what is that? It is. Look yes, at that. There was do, a do massive that improvement. Yes. From the 3.5 mm -hmm. to almost double the net international Why not? Reserve. Why? Why would it be almost double? Because we did additional three billion euro bond. So three billion euro bond plus three billion, we need to double. But the euro bond, we are going to put it to good use. You are going to do several other things. Raymond. That, yes. Raymond, you've um, let no one. Mm -hmm. Let no one deceive you on that. Okay? Let no one deceive you on that. And now, let me show you something here. I think today, because I'm going to touch on it um, in, in my next statement next week, I thought I should, um, I hinted something here. The entire budget, the entire budget statement, the domestically financed capital expenditure is 2 billion Ghana cities. Okay, 2 billion Ghana cities, which is about 500 million US dollars. So if government decides to spend the entire euro bond, or, uh, uh, the euro bond on the entire domestically financed capital expenditure, it's only 500 million US dollars that they can spend the money on. The rest, they are using for chop-chop, goods and services. No, but hold on, that's not chop-chop. They, they are going to put in very what important sections of what our is economy. That? Tell me. I, I tell you some of the things that they've done, yeah. including some of these things. They've given some of the money to Maslock. 
and mass lock is going no 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 but let me tell you what let let me tell you what mass lock is doing go out to the regions they are giving thousand Ghana cities to foot soldiers thousand Ghana cities is that how you use your euro bond money after the when the euro bond came in they've given some to mass lock mass lock is giving thousand Ghana and two thousand Ghana cities to MPP foot soldiers. No, Ghanaians, you want to say No, no, so. I, I know the MPP food soldiers because I'm an MP and I come from a constituency and I know those they are giving money to and I know they have no trade. In your constituency? In my constituency. But and it doesn't mean that the, the country. Is actually Oh, there's a video. No, no, it is happening everywhere. I've seen video from Ashiyama. I've seen video from everywhere. And that is what they are using the Eurobond money for. Is that what they're using happened? the Eurobond money? Is no, no, it is happened? only happening under this administration. Because they are, under, under yes. the NDC administration, yes. we the never woman who used superintendent, Eurobond. what they call it, the mask is before court, mm -hmm. mask lock. Mm -hmm. She's before court. Yeah, but we, 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 we never, no, 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 please, 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 we never used Eurobond for the purposes of mask lock and his to foot soldiers. No, we never did that. And let me tell you something, another one. They're using Eurobond money to construct KVIPs. You have a problem with that? Oh, yeah, serious. Serious. We're proving yeah, serious. is what it no, means, no, actually. No, no, let me tell you. And there's I, a I, I, long I, I, so, route so, 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 so if you go to the capital market mm -hmm. to borrow for the purposes of putting up KVIP, you think it's good? If you don't have the money, yeah. what else can we do? Look, so you can't use your tax revenue ah, or your IGF. Your uh, tax revenue Look, has been swallowed are you, are you, up in are you, are you telling me that the assemblies out there cannot mobilize? enough internally generated fund to put up KVIPs right, and we go to the capital market to borrow to build KVIPs. Un unacceptable. Unacceptable. Can because remember, the other way remember, the remember. The is a big issue in this no, country. No, I, I know it's a big they issue. They are losing huge numbers I know to color and all of the other things related I know it's a big issue. In the year 2014-2015, almost 158 Ghanaians died from cholera alone. We cannot afford to allow people basically eat their own human excreta and die as a result of that. So this is not this Raymond. Is everything to the core of our development. Ra 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 Raymond, the finance minister made a point, and he said that we have so much needs. Okay, I'm paraphrasing, mm -hmm. and uh, ability to pay the loans is something that should matter to yeah. us. Yeah, you go to the capital market. You're going to take a 30-year loan. In the next 30 years, you have to pay it in the form of a bullet. You will be servicing the debt over the 30-year period and you use the money for the purposes of putting a K KVIP, how do you repay that? And remember, it's in foreign currency. How do you repay that? I thought you put it in something that can repay itself, that can work to repay. Okay. But I'm not aware that the KVIP that we are spending the euro bond money on, we can get enough tools to the extent that we can convert it into dollars and repay our euro bonds. And that is why I'm saying that, yes, in as much as the KVIPs are so important, the assemblies, and that is why we have the district assemblies as a decentralized fiscal institution. They should be able to build this kind of KVIPs from the IGF, from the district assembly common fund, and from other tools and levies that they have. If they can't do that, then what kind of IG assembly is that? Have you heard the argument that countries like Japan have 300% of debt to GDP, and they're able to do that because they are built infrastructure, they're able to generate revenue for yes, that? Yes, yes, <laughs> we, we know that. But you see, it says the, that's the see, same but thinking behind but, that borrowing. But, but let me tell you, Japan is repaying the debt. Yes. And they are also repaying, right? Okay. We, we, we are not, we are struggling to pay. Look at, don't look at the headline numbers and then conclude. Mm -hmm. Japan invested most of this debt on projects that can repay by itself. Even though this debt are sitting on the public books, mm -hmm. but they are being serviced by the very agencies that they borrowed for. An example, they have highways that are told mm -hmm. and they're paying for itself. Paying for itself. A number, power, power plant and a number of them, they are paying for itself. Apart from that, look at Japan's debt. The 300 percent that we are talking about, okay, is largely owned by domestic investors. So they don't have to change their Japanese currency into to forex into US dollars and okay. repay that. Okay. So the dynamics are different. Mm. The dynamics are different. If we happen to get 150%, even 100%, you see what will happen to your currency. Because at the end of the day, the kind of forex you will need to be able to service this debt, you will not have it. So please, let us not compare Japan's situation to that of Ghana. Our situation is dangerous, and we have to caution this administration. It's getting bad out there. Throughout the entire time of the NDC, how much was borrowed? Okay, um, let me put it this way. Yeah. Let me put it this way. Um, you, you, you are talking of the NDC yeah. um, 
under President Mahama? Yes, please. Okay, so if you talk of NDC under President Mahama, overall we borrowed about 40 billion. 40? 40. That's like half of what's supposed to be In borrowed. In two and a half years. But there's no guarantee that it's going to continue, actually. Oh, it's going to get worse. And my, my projections, um, uh, by, by a year by now, the public debt will be about 250 billion. 250? Yeah, billion. A year by now. That doesn't mean end of December 2020. It's going to be by mid of 2020, 250 billion. Of course, I mean, it's, it, it may not be the case to It may to be worse. It, it can even be worse than that. Or oh, far lower than it's, that. No, I don't think so. Give and take, plus or minus Because Sino Hydro and other things will take up projects. Sino well, Hydro, Sino Hydro and what I've said is that this money mm -hmm. excludes the Sino Hydro. Yeah, that's true. This money that I'm talking because about. Because Sino is going to be, it's box that's going to pay for Sino Hydro. Uh, it's another matter. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's another it's, matter. It's, 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 it's another matter we have to look at it. That's going to be so, paid and, for. And, and as to whether the Sino Hydro uh, project will come on or not, nobody knows. You don't think it's coming on? I don't know. But, but we've launched it. They've yeah. launched it, but have they started work? In but fact, in fact next, week, next week will be exactly one year when Parliament approved the Master Project Facility Agreement. Next week? Yes. Exactly one year the Parliament approved that. One year on. After the hectic debate, one year on, where are we? Nothing. We've seen the President cutting, so nothing has happened. This money that I'm talking about, this debt, also excludes the two 150 million US dollars that Get Fund is going to borrow. It excludes the uh, 200 million US dollars that is before parliament for GNPC. It also excludes the 750 million US dollars additional non concessional loans that this government intends to borrow for this year. Well, you approve it in parliament, don't you? Oh, yes, we approve it in parliament. <laughs> but the majority <laughs> carry the day. No, but I you, come out and speak, you, you speak your against it. That. You parliamentarians cannot do anything about it. Is that what you're saying? Um, 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 the minority members of parliament cannot do anything about it. We can air our opinion. We can speak against it. At the end of the day, the government has the way. Has the you way. have not tried to lobby at the other side to see um, the reason um, behind this. When, when, when their government whip issues a trail line whip, you think your lobby will work. It won't work. <laughs> it's, it's interesting <laughs> to, to, to know <laughs> what the impact of all of this is supposed to be. Now, I want us to talk about the impact of the debt. Mm. So, 200 billion. What does it mean for our economy, generally? OK. What it means for our economy, one, now that we is, you, it, your tax revenue is not enough to service the debt and pay for wages, it means the government is constrained. In fact, in, in, in fiscal management, we call something rigidity. Our budget has become so rigid to the extent that government expenditure on social service and on, on, on infrastructure will be reduced. Okay, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. clearly, because the government does not have room to spend on social service. And by social service, you mean education, education health. health, maybe um, um, gender issues and all of that. Okay, government will not be able to have enough money to spend on social service. Two, because if they want to do that, they have to end up going to borrow to pay that. In fact, currently, this is what is happening. Okay. Okay, it's even the free SHS and all of that, they are borrowing to pay that. And borrowing? Yeah, they're borrowing. After capping other... Yeah, after capping, they're now borrowing to pay for free SHS and everything. But Health we made budget allocations for it. You see, it's we out made of some borrowing. And, and, billion and that's one thing, you are borrowing to pay that. Because clearly, your, your revenue is not enough to service your debt and pay for wages. And that is the first thing that hits you as a statutory obligation. You pay wages, mm -hmm. you, 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 you service your debt. In spite of that, you see, all of this thing that I'm making, I'm making reference to, I have decided to be very charitable because I have excluded the statutory funds. Because clearly the tax revenue should exclude the st statutory funds. The statutory funds should have the first charge on the ta statutory funds. On, on, okay. on, on, uh, the statutory funds should have the first charge on the tax revenue. Mm -hmm. In the because sense they that are they, they are mandated by law. Okay, so get fund, national health insurance, this assembly common fund. The law says a minimum of 5% to this assembly common fund. You have 2.5% of that, and uh, now a straight line. Uh, due to like a sales tax, at the same time you have the same thing for get fund uh, and national health insurance. So if you are to discount all of this, it's about one thirty percent. One thirty. Yes, currently for the first quarter, thirty percent, one hundred and thirty percent. So you need thirty percent additional revenue to be able to take off your statutories. The, That's how bad it is. The Bank of Ghana's report suggests that we are underperforming when it comes to revenue. Well. Well, I, I think it's, 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 it's another matter <laughs> we can look at it. <laughs> and and, and, and who, who should we blame if, if we are underperforming? Is the fiscal matter? The GRA. GRA, Ministry of Finance, is policy matter. It's policy driven. Don't just blame GRA. GRA is only implementing. 
But they've been doing a lot in the area of trying to recoup money. My brother, yes. if, if you distort the VAT regime, mm -hmm. who distort the VAT regime? The Minister of Finance. The Minister of Finance. How did they distort the VAT I tell regime? you, you come to Parliament, you decided to convert something that is you, you restrict deductibility. Mm -hmm. What are you trying to the VAT regime? What are you trying to do to the VAT, VAT regime? You're distorting it. You come to Parliament, you bring in zero rates everywhere to the extent that people are taking advantage to evade. Who do you have to blame? You said that when the Vice President goes to the College of Surgeons and announce a reduction in benchmark values for vehicles by 30%, do you expect the GRA to be magicians to collect something that is not there? They cannot do that. And that is costing us about 3 billion Ghana cities. So please, let us not put the blame on GRA. The blame is Ministry of Finance and Office of the Vice President, as long as the revenue and the performance is concerned. And they all know that. I'm not the one telling you, they know that. So come to it. You need 130% if you factor in the statutory funds to be able to service your public debt, pay your wages and salaries, and pay your statutory funds. And you are telling me that you are in a position to pay. No, you are not in a position to pay. Now, my confusion about this is that this is the year 2019. Mm. We are going into 2020. Government is very convinced that we'll get a lot of money going into the year 2020 because of all the projects and stuff, reaping the kind of benefits they are supposed to reap. Now, you portray the picture that if we don't intervene anytime soon, there'll be a problem. Mm. Do you see government coming back to revise some of its targets going into the media review? That, that is an, um, an ultimate situation. Um, because I doubt government will be able to achieve its fiscal deficit. Um, of 4.2%. Of mm -hmm. I, I mean, it's practically, it's higher than practically impossible. Way higher? No, far away. Um, um, we'll, at least they should expect um, about 1.5% more. Addition? Yeah. 5.5%. Five, five, um, five, um, five, five. Yes, and, and that in itself will breach the Fiscal Responsibility Act. So they would need of to. 5%. Of 5%. Of 5%. I see. So drastic measures would need to be implemented, um, either on the expenditure front or on the revenue front. They will need to cut expenditure or be able to increase revenue or announce a measure, not a compliance measure, a measure or a mixture of the two to balance the impact. Failure to do it, they will miss that. After the break, I'll continue my conversation with the minority spokesperson on finance on the matters of what the debt situation in the country is, some 198 billion um, cities. And the question we ask in our service, what does it mean for you and I, the ordinary people? What it also means for the economy of the Republic of Ghana. And after you've heard, the finance minister has been saying that it doesn't matter how much you borrow, it is what you do with the money and how you're able to service it that matters. After the break, we we'll continue our conversation on what your debt situation really is. Welcome back. This is Upfront. And our discussion today is the minority's major statement in Parliament today complaining about our debt sustainability when it comes to how much the Kufa government has incurred over the period. My guest is the minority's spokesperson on finance. He's a former deputy finance minister and he's helping us un understand what exactly their claims are since they borrowed. That's without doubt. They also have concerns about borrowing. Indeed, it reached the point the former Vice, the current vice president, a former running mate in that particular, talked about how the debt is going to be also sustainable going into the future yeah. and how we will get into IMF anytime soon. Of course, we did go to IMF mm. and we are where we are today. Mm. Now, you, you purport that there is, this government has added a huge amount of um, debt to our current debt. Mm. Mm. But what you don't do is desegregate, mm. de desegregate the debt in a, mm. disaggregate the debt in a more re re reasonable form. Mm. So. How much has really been added by this government by their direct actions? Okay. Not not due to exchange rate difficulties. Oh, but not due to yes. But if you talk about exchange rate difficulties, yes. NDC had exchange rate difficulties. Yes. The, the vice president is not discount that, did he? Yeah, he did. So what, what, what has happened now? <laughs> no, he didn't. And, at and, all. and, and when, when we had a very difficult exchange rate regime in the 2013, 2014, 2015. Yeah, he said that's what exposed so, the so, economy. So, so that doesn't matter. So this one, now it matters. Let me take you to something. Raymond. Do you know what bothers me so much about this situation? I'll give you some statistics. 
tax revenue to date. This is not oil revenue, tax mm -hmm. revenue. This How government the GRA has been collected. Yes, this government in the year 2017 uh, had 30.4 billion Ghana cities tax revenue. In the year 2018, they had 37.7 billion Ghana cities tax job. revenue. 2019 budget Project. the projection is 45.2 billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. If you are to put this trade together, it's about 113.4 billion. US dollars, uh, Ghana cities, 130 years. In three years, 113.4 billion. Okay. Apart from that, even though they are saying Ghana beyond aid, they've had so much aid grants. 2017. Yes, but that's why it says beyond the aid. No, no, they said Ghana is beyond aid. Yes. Uh, that means the aid will come in, but we are well, beyond it. That's not what we're told. Oh, okay. They don't want the aid. <laughs> now, no, I see if they have the aid. Is you, anyway. mm. 2017. They had 1.5 billion Ghana cities in, in grant aid. Mm -hmm. 2018, they had 1.1 billion Ghana cities in aid. 2019 budget, they are projecting 1.1 billion Ghana cities in aid. So put together, it's about 3.7 billion Ghana cities. If you are to add it to 1.1, 1. 1, 113.4 billion, okay. you are getting approximately 117 billion. Yes, amount in, of in, money. In, 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 in tax revenue and grant. For everything. This is for everything. In this for country. everything. This for is everything. for paying workers. Yes, this is yes, also yes. Pay I know. Paying I know. debt and I know. everything. I know. 117 What's your main concern? Okay. Now, oil revenue for that same period is 12.3 billion. Do the maths. So that will give you. 117 per. Yes. 12.7. Yes. So, so this one is going to give you 120. Um, About 20, 20, 120. Yeah. 21. Okay. 120 billion. And then 120, I think 129 billion to 21 billion. Okay. And then, apart from that, they have borrowed 80 billion Ghana cities, added to the public debt. 80 billion Ghana cities, excluding the energy debt. So overall, they've had resources, resources in excess of 200 billion Ghana cities. Have they borrowed 80 billion? Yes, they have. Borrowing alone? Yes, 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 yes. I mean, are you saying in fact, that? In fact, even borrowing, it will be more than that. No. But what they've added to the public debt uh -huh. is 80 no, billion. So they borrowed you, you far more than 80 billion. The public debt under this government has increased to yes. by 80 billion. Yes, by 80 billion. But, not, but in, in, terms of borrowing, oh, in terms of borrowing, it's, it's in, in the region of 100 and something billion. It's not lower oh, than no, that. No, no, it's far, far, far more than that. Far, far, far more than that. The, the um, um, what do you call it? Um, um, I'll give you an example of borrowings that are not hitting the state. Ghana Education Trust Fund. That's yet to reflect. It's yet to reflect. Okay. We have a number of loans in Parliament that we have approved that mm -hmm. they are yet to draw down on. They are all borrowings. Okay. Yeah. Yes, as we speak, there are finance bills before Parliament. About 750 billion that uh, 50 million US dollars that they've told us they are going to bring it. When we met them in Parliament, they are going to bring it. It's in the debt report. They are going to bring it. All borrowings. In fact, the borrowings in this quarter, we are going to see in excess of 100 billion. Let me tell you, in the recent monetary policy um, uh, issuance calendar, they are going to borrow in the second quarter about 12 billion Ghana cities. But what will add to the public that the net effect was as about 500 and something million Ghana cities. So the borrowings are far more than that, which is what is hitting us, that is lower. I see. Far more than that, because you are going to borrow 12 billion, but actually the net effect is about 5.6, uh, 566 billion. So that is what I agree is going to add to your public debt. But the borrowings is gone. In fact, their appetite for borrowings that we are seeing in this country is serious. Serious, Ray Raymond. But you see the evidence of the borrowing, right? Raymond, we haven't seen it. And that is where that, that was where I was going. You haven't seen it? You've not seen free SHS? No, no, no. You've not seen free SHS? It is not enough. How much is free SHS? How much is free SHS? I'm coming there. Let me give you some statistics. So we have seen a government that has resources almost one, 209 billion US do, uh, Ghana cities mm -hmm. over three years. I'll give you some other numbers that you compare. Capital expenditure. Yeah. Out of the two billion, um, uh, uh, 200 billion that they've had, capital expenditure is only 8.5 billion. So let's be clear, capital expenditure is what we spend the big 
money on. Mm. So the big projects, like mm. major road projects. Not only big projects. Yes. In fact, um, in this country, their classification of capital expenditure, they classify some free SHS as capital expenditure. <laughs> so everything <laughs> is in. <laughs> okay, I guess so, so under yes. this, their classification okay, of capital, so expenditure is capital expenditure Yeah, they are capital Maybe expenditure. Maybe they are building yeah. schools. Yeah, they are part. Yeah, no, Maybe, not only yeah. big one. In fact, um, the KG, they are all part they are of the capital expenditure. Yeah. I mean, it's a building. I mean, yeah, yes, a building. It may be costing some. Yes. Your problem is When they buy cars, they put it down here as capital expenditure. Okay. Everything. I understand. The Everything. Yes. Eight point five billion out of two hundred and nine billion Ghana cities. In fact, it's even less than the nine. So two hundred billion Uganda cities. Chop chop. No, no. Take your time. You're saying that eight point five billion has been spent on capital expenditure, and that's for the entire period. This is for the, for the for the entire. Period. Or even projected NDA. Yes, yeah, even including too. projected NDA. Eight point nine billion. Eight point five billion. Mm -hmm. And two thousand. And system. You see, yeah. everything's here. No, but let me then get this straight. Yeah. So, so you see, Raymond, what we are saying is simple. This administration have recorded so far 37.4 billion US dollars. 37.4 billion US dollars. That is what has become available to this administration from tax revenue and total borrowings of 16 billion. What they've added to the public debt of 16 billion. Mm. What we are saying is that they should tell us what they've used this money for. Why don't you know? Having to review the budgets over the years to be able to come to terms with what the money's have been used Raymond, for. Raymond, I'm confused. How are you confused? There's, are you, are nothing, you there's not nothing to show. Sorry, are you there's saying that nothing it's not to, up show. to your expectation or you're saying that there's nothing at all to Raymond, show for it? Raymond, there's absolutely nothing or very little to show for under this administration out of this 209 billion Ghana cities that they've spent. They cannot point to something. And so we are asking them, we are asking them that in as much as I'm confused, the ordinary Ghanaian is also confused. The taxpayer is concerned. Our future generation obviously will be very worried. And so we are asking the government to come and tell us what they've used the money for. When you approve this money, what do you think we're supposed to be used for? Well, when the, they come out with a budget statement, they come out with a number of um, um, wish lists. Oh, over the period we are going to build this road, we are going to do that. If you head of the sign of yeah. hydro, they are going to do that. So oftentimes impressions are created that they are going to use this money for this kind of thing. But it's up to us to review these numbers as and when they hit us. In fact, as we speak, the minister responsible for finance needed to have submitted to parliament the full year expenditure estimate, or the, not estimate, the outends for the entire 2018. He has failed to do that, breaching the very law that he claimed he upholds. But we are in June, mostly the... Yes, it should the, have happened okay. by April. I see. By April, first week of April, you should submit to parliament after the first three months. There's an interesting quote in the budget of 2019 that you should be interested in. It talks in paragraph 215 that government inherited 120 billion of debt at very high interest rates. Mm -hmm. That's your debt. Mm -hmm. And even though they have brought it down, down the interest rates considerably, mm -hmm. they are still saddled with a sizable amount of expensive debt, mm -hmm. which means that in 2016, they will spend over 16 billion of the revenue. This mm -hmm. is about 26.6%. Which year is this? This is for 2019. Okay. Mm -hmm. In 2019, as such, this, this year, okay. they are going to spend some 16 billion of our revenue mm -hmm. on interest payments alone. Mm -hmm. This amount can be considerably be reduced if mm -hmm. we refinance. That's according to what the Bank of Ghana and mm -hmm. the finance minister mm -hmm. is saying. Was this refinancing done? <laughs> I think it's a question you have to ask him. <laughs> no, but you are No, you see. Um, Was it done? Yes. Um, refinance is not a new thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that the Honorable Sektepe introduced. Okay. He refinanced um, the first euro bond that was um, 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 done by the previous administration, mm -hmm. the President Kufu. In fact, we built buffers apart from the refinancing and um, used the sinking fund to build the buffers. In fact, at the time we were leaving office, we had bought back some of the existing euro bonds, okay, um, about 100 and something million. And we built buffers approximately 550 million US dollars to take off the 2007 euro bonds. It's not a new thing. Yes, the Minister of Finance 
in his last year bond did some refinancing. In fact, they did switching mm -hmm. uh, um, and then did a bit of tender as well. What they did was um, um, out of the three billion euro bonds that um, they went out, I think they switched about 500 okay. million. About 500 million. Okay, they did liability management. So it's something that has been going on over the period. They won't be the first government to do refinancing. In fact, we did a chunk of refinancing. In fact, our last euro bond, okay. the, the, the one billion that we took that World Bank back, the entire one billion was used for refinancing of domestic debt. I see. That is what actually started bringing domestic rates, treasury rates down, because that is entirely what we use the money for. So it's not a new thing. He can't come and teach us what refinancing is. In fact, it's something that we brought into the system and we started it. Okay, now I want to end on this particular note. Mm. There are some who have said the only thing this government has done well more than the government that the NDC was, was a proper management of the economy. Mm. Like this, you are disputing that. I did. I do. I do. And your exact basis I is do. what? And um, as I've said, one should not look at the fiscal deficit and draw a conclusion. Mm -hmm. For a reason that in the year 2000, and I've said that this government has been saved by the bell twice. And I wonder whether they will get a third one. <laughs> Maybe they will be third time lucky, but I doubt okay. it. In the year 2007 uh, and 17, they inherited this administration. Uh, they inherited this country, uh, mm -hmm. obviously the management of the economy. Nobody anticipated, in fact, they themselves did not anticipate that the 10 oil fields was going to come on stream, the Sankofa. Okay, so two oil fields came on stream, it did two things, brought in revenue so much, almost a billion Ghana cities, actually grew the economy from the oil sector, pushed the GDP growth almost by twice from the previous, and then what happened was that it increased the denominator, so even though in expenditure-wise, they exceeded the expenditure target, mm -hmm. but as a percentage to GDP, because of the denominator, it's reduced. That in itself, they're only lucky, and so nobody should do it, say that they were magicians. They did nothing. In the year 2018, again, 2018, because of the rebase we started in September 2016, okay. in fact, we started, the economy was rebased. The nominal GDP received some boost, in fact, by 25%. Okay. Again, if you express all of these indices as a percentage to a denominator that has increased by 25%, what happens to they you? Will be lower. It goes up. They will look way they will better. They certainly go better. And so that, that's in itself, that, that in itself does not mean they are, they are better managers of the okay. economy. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Let's see what happens in the year 2008 and, and 19 and beyond. I want to thank you so much. Thank Folks, you. That's where we end today's edition of Upfront. My name is Raymond Alqua.